Hello and welcome back to another Threat Snapshot, where we break down threats and show you how to detect them. Today, we're going to be digging into some ESXi ransomware. Let's break it down. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, as always, there's a lot of great intel about this uh, topic, ESXi ransomware. Um, luckily, there is a, in 2023, Alex John posted on Detect FYI, a pretty great write-up uh, that sort of consolidated information from a lot of these uh, articles and really pinpointed some of those detection opportunities. So this was a really great one. You can go through and get a lot of detection opportunities out of here. Um, we'll go over a lot of those detections uh, later on in this video. Uh, however, in the beginning, you'll see did a showdown uh, search to see how many public facing ESXi servers were around at the time. And this again was May, 2023. So I ran that search again in, now in 2024 and it's down pretty significantly uh, to 11,000. And so digging a little deeper, looking at the history, in 2021, there was 104,000, around 104,000 public facing ESXi servers. Since then, now in 2024, we're down to you know 11,000, um, which is a pretty big drop. Uh, a lot of that is probably due to incre increased awareness of the ransomware targeting ESXi servers. Uh, also, there was uh, end of life support around that time for uh, certain versions of ESXi. So it could have been, you know, hey, our versions end of life, let's go to the cloud finally, or, or decommission the server or whatnot. Um, but yeah, migration to cloud is also probably another factor. People moving away from ESXi, moving into the cloud uh, could be a reason why this, this drop happened. But nevertheless, uh, ESXi servers, even if they're not public facing, are vulnerable to these attacks. Um, for example, one of the, the CVEs being used by ransomware tended to, or you had to be on the same network segment as the ESXi server. So that indicates they probably got in through a different method into the network and then pivoted over to the ESXi server to ransomware it. So just because your ESXi server is not public facing, I wouldn't say that you're 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 out of the woods there. So definitely this is still relevant. Um, first thing, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna be able to detect anything for ESXi, you're gonna have to ingest the logs, right? So there's a lot of great logs on the ESXi server. Um, and this is this is kind of the issue with a lot of those public facing or sort of edge device, um, edge devices and client environments is a lot of times they're neglected from the logging standpoint or neglected from, um, you know, monitoring. Uh, part of that is due to the fact that like you're not going to a lot of these endpoint devices you're not going to you're not going to install um, or these edge devices you're not going to install an EDR or like right there's not a lot of support for things like that um, so sometimes they get neglected and they don't the logging doesn't get set up and then it kind of leaves that blank spot for the the detections to even work so first things first right go in get the syslog set up in the environment it's really it's pretty straightforward you just go in there change the settings and the main setting uh, when you go in is the syslog global log host that's where you're going to set up the syslog server you want to send the logs to um, in my lab setup that i was using during some of the development process was uh, i was using i was forwarding to a syslog server that would ingest those logs or, or via the elastic agent and the elastic agent would then send those over to elastic uh, and it was pretty straightforward. I will say the default parsing was pretty, uh, it was basically just putting almost everything in, in a description field. So it wasn't, you know, by default parsed out very well, but obviously you could do a lot of custom parsing to make things a little bit more um, clean. Um, but let's let's dive into some of these detections here. And again, a lot of these are coming from a, a compilation of those those reports that I showed. And I'll, I'll include links to those reports as well as the Detect FYI um, article in the description if you want to explore those and, and kind of dig in and look for additional detection opportunities that might have been missed. The first detection that we're going to go over here is the suspicious command execution. Uh, basically, in the article, you'll see there's a lot of different commands that attackers might run. Some of these might be investigate, them investigating the environment, trying to do some recon and understand where they are, what, what's there. Um, so running the ES, ESX CLI command is, is something that you might see them run quite often, right? Because that's the command that's going to allow them to do things like discover the VM, see what's on there, see what the permissions look like, what accounts are on the ESXi server, et cetera, right? So there's a lot of these different commands, and this is basically going through all the known commands that attackers have used. So if you see these, it could be interesting. However, obviously, this could be admin activity. Um, if, if your admin does use like SSH to get in there and, and, and modify any of the ESXi uh, settings and whatnot. Um, but it's still good, you know, to monitor these just in case, uh, make sure that if you see this activity, validate that it is an admin and not, you know, some malicious actor doing some recon and whatnot. Uh, another thing that is commonly seen with the ESXi ransomware is when it gets on the machine, one of the first things it will do is kill all the VMs before it starts encrypting. Um, so you'll see there's two different commands here that this detection looks for, which is um, using pkill to basically kill any process that starts with VMX um, or 
running an, an ESX CLI command that goes through and basically lists all the VMs and kills them all. Um, so this detection basically looks for either of those, those things being ran. And this is something that pretty confident, I, you wouldn't see this happen. Hopefully an admin's not doing this. Um, so I think this is something you could be pretty confident. If it hits, there's probably something weird going on. Another one, when, you, uh, when an attacker gets access to the box, they often want to uh, turn on SSH, right? So if they have physical access, they can log in or they got credentials somehow from credential upping, they get in there, they wanna turn on SSH so they can get access um, via the command line to do some of the, the other items that having to click around in the in the platform. So this is basic, This is a really basic one, which is basically just looking at the log to see a message of SSH access has been enabled. So that's something that can be interesting to monitor for because then you're knowing, hmm, someone just enabled SSH, we don't usually have that enabled, let's investigate. So keeping an eye on those types of things uh, can also be helpful, an indicator of someone messing around with your environment. So another one is attackers installing malicious uh, VIB or vSphere, bu vSphere bundles um, to compromise systems, get back doors, get persistence. Uh, so this is another one you can look out for. It's in the, the VMK warning log file. And basically it's just looking for a message with um, the known message for that type of activity. Um, so yeah, that is probably a suspicious one if you see that for sure. So you'd wanna dig deeper and understand if that was some legitimate activity um, in your environment. So another one uh, you might see here is um, VM tools D being used to send malicious uh, commands from the ESXi, ESXi server to a Linux host. And so to find that you're looking for parent image of VM tools D and command line of bash SH or Z shell um, or containing bash SH or Z shell. So that's definitely a good one to, to keep an eye on. Another one you're gonna see here is uh, threat actors using VM tools D to actually send malicious commands from an ESXi server to a Linux host. So if you're seeing parent image with VM tools D and command line containing bash SH or Z shell or ZSH, that's something to actually look into because uh, that could be someone trying to send commands from your ESXi server to another host. On top of the detections we've gone through so far, there are a lot of others. Uh, a lot of these, these come from the Sigma community. Um, a lot of really smart people working in there that are constantly releasing interesting detections. I uh, highly suggest checking out uh, their repo. Um, if you come into our platform, they're all community ac accessible, so you can go in and look at them and any related intel on them. Um, but definitely get a community account, log in, check these out. Uh, you can translate and utilize them in your environment, just copy them out. Um, if you're a subscriber, you know, one click deploy or hunt from our environment to your uh, sims or EDRs. Um, one last thing, looking at some logs I brought in uh, our Chronicle and looking at them, this was from the um, configuration I had again which pretty much everything was going into description here. So you'd be going through in this one specifically, right, was showing SSH enabled. And you can see there's several different logs, right? This was an audit log that was showing SSH enabled, the VOB log showing SSH enabled, another VOB. Um, so it, it's pretty interesting. You'll see several different logs might give you uh, indicators of the same thing. But so definitely it's, it's worth exploring the logs, seeing what you can find in there. But again, highly suggest exploring all these other detections in our platform um, and maybe running some hunts in your environment, see what you can find. But the number one thing is patch. Um, make sure, obviously, if there's any CVEs, patch those systems. But again, you never know um, when something else is gonna come out, right? Another CV, another a way an attacker can get, it, can get in. The most recent um, attack or ESXi ransomware that I can remember was the, I think it was the sexy ransomware, uh, SEXI. And um, that one, there wasn't a ton of information um, released from like a research standpoint, it was a little bit more high level, but I think it's probably safe to say that some of these methods used over the past years, right, for since 2021 by these other uh, malware using uh, ransomware on ESXi are probably somewhat similar to what uh, Sexy was using. So highly recommend going through these different detections, utilizing them in your environment if you, if you have ESXi, and, and maybe even reading the articles, exploring other ways uh, to, to to create detections in your environment. Uh, in our platform, we have a detection ID. If you're a subscriber, it makes it a lot easier just to, to develop detections, so I highly recommend utilizing that. Um, but other than that, if you like the video, please like and subscribe, um, and hit the bell if you want notifications. And we're gonna be trying to release more videos weekly, um, and. Add comments if you have any ideas of, of what we could release or what you're interested in hearing about, and we could try and do some, some deeper dives into things. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.